Welcome back. An item of economic news now. And the rand is the top emerging currency so far this year. And that's according to Treasury One. It's South Africa's leading treasury management company to help us unpack the figures and understand how the rand has managed to firm up quite this much. I'm joined now by Treasury One's currency strategist and account executive, Andre Siliers. Andre, thank you for your time. Suggestions are that this goes against the grain of everything that was expected uh, when looking at, you know, the minutes of the, of the Fed in the United States and the performance of other currencies. It was expected that the rent would be battling somewhat, but actually it's firming up. How do we explain this? Okay, so um, I think that one of the first things I have to say is that you know, textbook economics says that if a currency uh, is to benefit, then it will benefit from an increase in interest rates, which was the general expectation uh, for a stronger dollar uh, after the Federal Reserve meetings. But we have seen the opposite. Now, this has been long time coming. Uh, inflation and higher inflation and the discussion around tapering and interest rate increases in America has been going on for a while. And I think a heck of a lot of that was already discounted in the market. Um, and hence, after the last meetings, with more or less the same rhetoric speech, we expect, expect inflation to remain high, we expect it to be there, we expect to taper further, we expect to taper faster, uh, and we expect to increase interest rates a little bit faster, very much the same as the minutes of the last three meetings. Uh, and I think the, the market uh, is also sort of getting a little bit tired of that, and then there's the old saying of, buy the rumor, sell the fact. And now that we know it um, and part of it's discounted, we've actually seen the dollar losing a little bit of value. But at the very, very same time, one must mention that our own minister, uh, governor of the central bank, Mr. Letsege Kanyahu, had very firmly uh, come out during his last uh, meeting after the MPC meeting, and said that if the Federal Reserve increases interest rates, South Africa will, sit, will not sit on the sidelines and we will also raise interest rates. And I think the expectation of our interest rates also going up uh, quite soon and most probably even before the Federal Reserve starts moving on interest rates uh, is also supporting the currency. Uh, and that is a, a very important yeah. fact. Andrew, when we say the RAND is top performing uh, in terms of the emerging market currencies, what exactly do we mean? What is the picture? What does it look like? Well, if we look at the emerging markets and we look at, uh, you know, Russia, we look at Indonesia, we look at Brazil, we look at Mexico, Turkey, etc., uh, then that's all in the basket of emerging market currencies. That simply means that we have strengthened more than them this year. So that makes us the top performing emerging market currency. But we must just please keep in mind at this point in time that we are only on the 10th of January. And when a statement like that is top performing this year, uh, we speak of a period where volumes was very thin, liquidity was not all that high, and small news alerts and small movements or small amounts of money that moved around in the market created quite big moves. Now, there was some rumors last week. Uh, I cannot put any substanti substantiation to that, but there was rumors of some possible merger and acquisition uh, that might go through the South African market uh, that could be quite big. Uh, and I think there was a bit of front running in the event of something like that happening. I, as I say, I don't know of anything firm, but that created quite a lot of selling. And that selling in thin liquidity created quite a big move uh, and strengthened the currency quite substantially, uh, and that contributing to the fact that we're the top uh, if this, market. If this trend continues of a firmer rent, um, Andre, uh, and, and within the context where you mention the likelihood that we could see interest rate hikes uh, domestically um, in terms of what the uh, Monetary Policy Committee might do. Uh, locate that for me within the context of the economy. Why does this matter and what are the implications for people beyond those who, you know, 
play in the markets and those who you know follow um, the movements of, of currencies uh, wh why does this matter why is this a big deal okay so if we just think in terms of one very important import uh, from our side in South Africa then we're thinking in terms of oil now if we import oil and we have a stronger currency it simply means that in rand terms we need less rand to buy the amount of dollars to pay for the oil imports and that would be positive uh, for something like the fuel price uh, and it would help us in terms of lower to more stable fuel prices and that would be positive for inflation that would be positive for the consumer but at the same time we're also importing a heck of a lot of other stuff uh, and the more you import and the less you have to pay for that the longer you can keep prices at lower levels uh, and sustain those prices at lower levels uh, and here we think in terms of cars we think in terms of certain foods that we import a, a lot of things mm. uh, and that's positive for the economy uh, and that simply also means that you don't import higher prices and higher inflation into your country. But as a parting shot though, Andre, it does seem to be a situation where one area of the economy gives with the one hand, the other area of the economy takes, because while you're talking about the, the, the positive impact of a stronger rent, uh, it is premised on the potential for an interest rates hike, which people who have debt um, <laughs> will not necessarily appreciate um, and also factor into that equation the whole picture around inflation going forward. What's your sense uh, of, of that, uh, you know, uh, clutch and accelerator balance that the MPC tends to play around inflation and the currency? We must always remember that the central bank is not there to facilitate growth. Uh, monetary policy is not an instrument that facilitates growth in your economy. Uh, that's going to come from fiscal side, that's going to come from structural changes uh, from government that facilitates growth. Uh, and as I say, on the fiscal side, that comes in when you have a Minister of Finance coming in and saying that he's spending less money on social welfare, more money on job creating uh, projects because the job creation becomes important because then there's more people that earns money there's more people that can spend money so uh, a reserve bank is not there to facilitate growth in terms of the interest rates they there to facilitate and manage the supply and the cost of money it's always up to the consumer to make sure that if he incurs any debt first of all he can afford that debt uh, and that he repays some of that debt as soon as possible uh, to enable him to rather save than living on credit. Uh, but be that as it may, an economy is always something that on the one end it takes and on the other one end, end it gives. Uh, when you think in terms of interest rates, also remember that these people only living on interest, and I'm thinking of a lot of pensioners yeah. uh, who lives on their interest. Uh, of investments that they've made through their lifespan of work. Uh, for them, higher interest rates, again, is a positive side. Absolutely. So, yes, always a give and take. Uh, but it depends on how well you balance your own personal finances, how well you can afford the credit that you've taken. Yeah, um, um, important insights to share uh, this early in the year. I appreciate that Andres Salias from Treasury One there weighing in on the performance of the RAND, at least in the first 11 days uh, of 2022.